All right. So as I was saying, we're going to start 7.3 today, and we're going to talk about how to add and subtract some rational expressions. So basically, just our fractions. So let's get started on that. We're going to add and subtract some rational expressions. You know, just like I did with multiplication and division, I'm going to start us off with some very basic fractions here. So, for instance, let's see how to add 7 thirds plus 2 thirds. First thing, uh, can I add those fractions together? Yeah. What lets me add these fractions together? So that's different than multiplication and division. In multiplication and division, we didn't even have this thing called a... What was it again? The common denominator. We didn't even have that. We didn't need it because we were slashing away numerators and denominators. It's kind of fun, getting rid of factors. But here we do have to have those common denominators. Uh, you learned this from your pre-algebra class that you have to have that. Um, I won't go into the exact reasons why because you've, you've covered that before. You just know you have to have one, right? And in order for you to add or subtract these fractions, bam, they have to be the same. And if they are the same, well, it's not too bad to add them. What do you do? Okay. Wait a minute, so I don't add the denominators? No, okay, so that stays to be a 3. That's exactly right. So I'm going to add our numerators together, keep the denominator the same. And then lastly, we're going to do what? Yeah, and this is also a little bit different than what we had with multiplication and division. See, with multiplication and division, you can simplify as you go, right? You can simplify actually kind of in this step. You can't do that with addition. There's nothing to simplify here at all. We can only simplify until, not even here can we simplify, that doesn't even work, because that's connected by addition, but we can't do that. Only until you get to the very last step, after you add everything together, can you simplify. So that's a little bit different also than our, our multiplication division, is that we can't simplify as we go with this thing. Got to get all the way down to the end, and then we simplify. Are you with me on this stuff so far? All right. So to add some fractions, we have to have a common denominator. The denominator stays the same. We don't add them together. And lastly, we can't simplify until the last step. And what's nice about this, this is going to be exactly the same process for rational expressions. We do the same thing. It's just instead of having single numbers like these things up here, we're going to have expressions. But it, it's basically the same thing. Let's take a look at a couple simple examples. We'll start building this up and building this up, okay? So that's a rational expression. That's a rational expression. We're adding them together. In this case, we're not multiplying or dividing. Uh, tell me something. Are these going to be possible to add as they are right now? Yeah. What lets you know that? Great. That's our first little thing that we have to have. We have to have a common denominator. That's, that's a fact. We must have that to add some fractions together. We've got one here. So at the next step, what we're going to do, <coughs> we're going to write this as one fraction. And what we're going to do is do x plus 2x. I would like to see that step for now. We write things as one fraction first, and then we add them in just a second. Uh, but do the step because it's going to help you later on. I'll show you that in just a minute. And down at the denominator, am I going to have 6 plus 2x? No. What is going to be down there? Yeah, same thing. Lastly, we're going to look at the numerator and denominator and combine like terms if we can. Now the denominator, you're not going to have anything to combine because it does not change. But the numerator, you might. So up on the numerator, we have a 2x, and we have an x. How much does that give us? Yeah. 
and then you would look for anything to simplify. Can I simplify anything here? Okay, then I'm done in this case. I can't simplify like threes, that doesn't work. Or the x's, I can't do that either. Uh, so I'm done here. But here's the point where you would try to factor and simplify. Are we all good so far? Uh, I have a question on the, when you add x plus 2x, you don't add the x's? <coughs> we do, you have one x here, you have two x's here, that makes three x's. You don't get an x squared, that would be multiplication. Is that what you're thinking of? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's try uh, let's try a couple more. Does it work the same way for with subtraction? Do I still need a common denominator here? Yeah. Uh, is this one okay? Do I have that? Mm -hmm. So we have exactly the same thing on the denominators. All we're going to do is write this as one fraction when you have those common denominators. So on our denominator, we'll have that 2x minus 5 still. That stays the same in all three parts. On the numerator, we'll have, how much is on the numerator? 2x minus 5. We try to combine like terms, but there's nothing to combine. How much is this? 1. one. Oh, that's interesting. We can actually still reduce like that, still simplify. So this gives us 1. Now, you're probably wondering why I have you do that step and this step. You're going to see on this next problem here. kind of important one for you guys to get. This is really similar to one thing we've done in this class before, but I just want to refresh your memory on what you do on it. So first thing I'm going to ask, am I okay as far as the denominators go? Do I need to do any work with that? No. Uh, exact same thing. That's great. That's what we need for addition subtraction. The next step is we're going to write this as one fraction. You see, the thing about it is that a lot of people like to do the math in their head, right? Because here, I mean, it's very easy. You can look at this and go, oh yeah, that's going to be 9 over 3. No problem whatsoever. They're single numbers. But here what a lot of people do, they forget the fact that that fraction bar implies parentheses. They forget that. And so what they do here is they'll do something like 4x squared, that'd be great. They'll do the plus 7x. Do you see how I'm getting the plus 7x? They do that. But then they put a plus 15 at the very end. And that part right there, that's the mistake. You see, when we have these fractions, these expressions being subtracted, what's implied is there's, there's parentheses here and there's parentheses here. It goes around both those numerators specifically so that when we do this, when we do this, we're going to get, sure, something over x plus 3. But what it really means on the numerator is 4x squared plus 15x minus the entire expression 8x plus 15. And this is really the reason why I have you write things as one fraction, so that you see that first off. But then also, it changes things from a fraction problem into just a simplifying a polynomial problem. And we've done that before in this class. So it's nice, we get the numerator, we just look at that part, and we simplify for that. Are you starting to see that these parentheses are kind of important for us? Mm -hmm. That's going to distribute that negative. If not, you know, you have to do this before. I look two places on a problem. I look where a mistake could happen, I look right here, and I'm going to look at the very end. The very end. If, you, if I look at the very end and you got it wrong, I'm going to look right here. I'm going to say, oh, they don't know what they're doing. Or they did, they just made a simple math error after that. Does that make sense to you? So that's a very important point for us. So let's see what happens after this. The 4x squared plus 15x, not a problem. But what we're going to get next, we know what happens with that parentheses and that minus. We're going to get minus 8x. Everybody's going to get that part. We just need to be able to get also the minus 15 there. That's going to change that sign inside those parentheses. Remember doing something like that? I think it was C.1 when we were distributing negatives. We, we made sure to get that. Over x plus 3. Now at this point, we couldn't simplify anywhere before. We're going to combine some like terms and see if we can simplify.
I'll do a pass around too. Okay. What's the next thing I do on this problem? Combine like terms. Okay, we oh, already combined like terms. Sorry. What's the next thing we do? Factor. Why are we going to try to factor? You're right. Why? Simplify. Yeah, that's right. It's the only way we can simplify, right? So we're back down to simplifying. Can you factor this one? No. Can you factor this one? Yes. Hey, you've done that before. We know how to do that. That's a diamond problem. Does it have the extra step or not? Yes. Yeah, it sure does. And so this is going to be, well, we, we can do try to do it up the side if you'd like. Hopefully you got 7 and negative 60, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking somehow maybe 12 and 5 with this. Did you think about that also? 12 and 5, probably positive 12, negative 5, that adds to 7, that multiplies the negative 60 in. Yeah? Why didn't we factor the one up there for the x plus 2 x? Like? We were actually able to just combine like terms with that. Uh, okay, and we did that here too, we combined like terms, but this is factorable. 3x is a single term, you can't factor that. Okay, that you're done there. We keep going on this thing. Do a little bit of factoring by grouping. Which we've seen this before, that's why I'm going quickly through this. We've done this a lot of times. We'll continue with this. And that's our new numerator. So what we're going to write Instead of the 4x squared plus 7x minus 15, we're going to write this expression. And we'll have x plus 3 times 4x minus 5 all over x plus 3. Now, can you tell me, does anything, does anything simplify out of this expression? Great. So you see that we're, we're combining the idea of simplification even with addition and subtraction. It's just coming to the very end. With multiplication and division, it was nice. We could do it as we go. But notice something. Look at the board with me. Could you have simplified this? No. no. This one? No. no. This one? Definitely not. This one? Well, you are. You're, you're combining like terms. And then at this point, you can't just start crossing stuff out. You've got to factor it. So you can't do that until the very last step. That's what kind of makes addition and subtraction a little bit harder. So you can't make it easier as you go. You make it tougher initially, and then you fix it later. So our final answer is the 4x minus 5. Okay, I'd like to give you two, one to try on your own. Let's see if you can do this. Be careful on the parentheses. Be careful on the common denominator. Let's see if we can work it all the way down. Are you ready for it? Okay, I'm going to give you one like that, make sure we can do this one, and then I'll give you one more right below it. That's more similar to this one we just did.
So we're checking for common denominators. We know we have to absolutely have that. We'll put in parentheses around the numerators where you have to. Because that's going to change the second sign. If you do those parentheses, it might mess that sign up. We can't have that happen. Then we're combining like terms and we're going to see if we can simplify. Is there any other homework to turn in? I need that at the beginning. On the first one, you check for a common denominator. Of course, we have one. That's going to stay the same, x plus 6. <clears throat> I hope you did this. Watch on the board real quick. Did you do this on your paper? Did you get that? Yes. Did you change the second sign? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to get minus x plus 3 over x plus 6. We'll combine some like terms. What we're going to get out of this is over? Good. We have the 2x and the minus x. That gives us x. We have 3 plus 3. That gives us 6. You're going to get a 1 out of that. If you did this, if you did this like incorrectly, if you forgot to change that sign, you're going to end up getting, I think it's uh, x over x plus 6. And that, that wouldn't be a good thing. You mess up that, that constant at the very end. I have got 1 out of that. Good, good for you, all right. Give you a little bit longer on the second one. Okay, second one. So, we already have that common denominator. That is great. That's what we want. So we're going to go ahead and write this as one fraction. We can't simplify now. We're not going to factor now. That's not what the, what the deal is because eventually we're going to have to combine like terms anyway, right? Hope you're realizing that. If you factor now, you just have to undo that later. Okay? We want to factor at the very, very end. Not before that for the numerators. Denominators, I'll show you some things when we don't have common denominators that we will have to factor a little bit. But not the numerators when you're adding subtracting. So we're going to make this one fraction. We're going to have over x plus 2 because that is our common denominator. On the numerator, we'll have the 2x squared plus 5x minus, we have to have this whole thing. So you have to have parentheses there. It's going to be changing the second sign. When we do this, we're going to distribute that negative, and we'll get 2x squared plus 5x minus 4x minus 6, all over x plus 2. And I need a show of hands how many people made it at least that far. Good for you. You have all the signs right, right? Awesome. Okay. Now we'll combine like terms because we know we can't simplify yet. We're going to try to factor just after this. So we have our 2x squared plus x minus 6 over x plus 2, and the next step, everybody, is to do what? Diamond. Yeah, we don't just go, I will leave it. It's good enough. We're going to try the diamond problem to see if we can factor and simplify it. Because what we got over here, the simplified version, is way easier to work with than a fraction like this. And if we can simplify that fraction, it's better. So we're going to try to do that. I know this doesn't factor. So x plus 2 stays the same. Does the numerator factor? Yeah. Okay. In order to check that, probably going to use a diamond problem because there's a number up front, probably going to have the extra step here. Actually, definitely going to have that. 1 over, over negative 12 tells me I'm working with positive 4 and negative 3. That adds to 1, that multiplies to negative 12. That's going to give us the 2x squared plus 4x minus 3x and at the very end minus 6. When we group this thing out of here, we factor 2x. Out of here, we factor negative 3. We have exactly the same thing. And that right there is our new numerator. I know I did that quickly, but this is factoring. This should be, this is three weeks old at this point. So we're going to start moving quickly through the factoring portion.
So we were like, oh, so we were like, ah. Anything? Excellent. Was it worth our factoring? Yeah. In this case, yeah. It was worth Sometimes it's not, right? Sometimes you factor and you can't simplify anything. But in this case, you can, which is nice. And we're done. Good to go on that problem. As far as we can go, you're done. What I don't want to see from you, by the way, I saw this in some of your homework. Please don't invent equations. Don't <laughs> invent an equal sign and continue to solve this. That's not what we're looking for. Okay? If I have, if I want you to solve something, I'll give you an equation. I'll give you the equal sign, and then you set it equal to zero, and then you factor it, and then you solve it. Okay? Is there any equals up here? We're not solving. We're just manipulating. Okay? We're just combining them and simplifying as much as we can. We don't have to set that equal to zero to solve. We don't have to set each of these equal to zero to solve. That's not the problem here. Okay, that's not it. You feel okay with this? <laughs> now, in every single case, we've had a common denominator. Are there times when the denominators are not the same? Yeah, most of the time, actually. This is, these are kind of rare cases. These are the nice ones, you know. Yeah, don't, don't have to work on that. Good thing it's Wednesday morning because we don't have to work on math. It's nice. But the other ones, well, let's see about the other ones. For instance, this is one of the other ones. If you notice on this, our denominators are, are clearly not the same. We've got the two-thirds, we've got the seven-eighths. In no way can I combine this and get like nine-elevenths. That'd be so nice, right? You just add them together, straight across, like multiplication. That'd be, that'd be cool. But no, it doesn't work that way. We know we have to have common denominators because we're adding up uh, parts of something that's cut into the same number of parts. Here we don't. We have something that's cut into thirds and something that's cut into eighths. We can't add that together. Okay? It's like saying, okay, uh, you had two-thirds of a pizza and you had seven-eighths of a pizza. Well, her pizza was only cut into three slices and your pizza was cut into eight slices. If you had two slices and you had seven slices and you add them together, is that nine slices of the same pizza? No, you have to make it somehow the same pizza in order for you to add that together. That's kind of the idea. That's in a, a real nutshell there. Okay, that's like really watered down. Uh, but the idea is you have to have common denominators no matter what, if you're adding or subtracting. How do you find them? LCD. The L What's the LCD mean? Lots. <clears throat> or or least. What the LCD is? Here's like the math definition of it. The LCD is a product of all the, the largest powers of the unique factors on the denominator. That's a really like mathy way to say it. I'll show you some easier ways to find it, but that's really what we're doing. The product of all the unique factors in the denominators. sitting right there, and she would just go, oh, yeah. she'd go, yeah. <laughs> like, like she was a silenced yeah. gun, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she had like a clip of like 40, because I mean, it's, she'd do like 40 sneezes in a row, <laughs> then I had another one in the back, and he would do like a bazooka, so I had the silencer girl, and the bazooka girl, <laughs> 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 easy, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Some interesting sneezers in my life. Okay. <laughs> better than a snore. Better than a snore, yeah. I've never had a snore yet. You can, you can all try. Yeah, don't snore. 
Okay, so what we're going to do for the most of the rest of our time, we're going to talk about how to find an LCD for our fractions. We're not actually going to be adding these to this point or subtracting them. We're just working on LCD to make sure we really have this thing down. So for our two-thirds and our seven-eighths, here's how we would find our LCD. Here's an easy way for the numbers. You take the largest denominator. In our case, that's eight. You start finding multiples of eight. And you check to see if the other denominators will divide it. So here we'd start with 8. Does 3 divide 8 evenly? No. No. We'd start the next multiple. That would be 16. Does 3 go into 16? No. Next multiple is? Does 3 go into 24? Yes. Yeah. So that would be our LCD for this case. So here LCD would be, yeah, 24. Just to make sure you get the handle on this, uh, why don't you try this one? We're, no, we're not adding them or subtracting them. I just want you to find LCD, so do it on your own. Don't say that loud. But go ahead and find me the LCD there, okay? Start with the larger denominator. Start finding multiples of that. The first one they, that the other denominators divide into evenly, that's your LCD. So we'd start with 15. No. We'd start with 30. No. We'd go to 45. Yes. Okay. Did you find 45? Perfect. Now this should be review for us, right? I mean, we've done this a long time ago. But you're going to notice two differences here. On the first one, it just so happened that the LCD was these two numbers multiplied together. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Down here, we see that that's not the case. You don't necessarily need to multiply the denominators to get the LCD. That would be way too big. That would be huge. We don't want to do that. We want the lowest common denominator, not just a common denominator. Are you with me on that? Now, the difference between these denominators, that one had common factors. You see that? Common factor 3. That one did not. So. Uh, one thing you can do, what, what would actually work here, is using the fact that they have a common factor to, to understand that you're not going to have them all fun together. You can take out that common factor, and that's what you'll get. So for instance, um, if this had, if, since this has a common factor of 3, what you could actually do, multiply the two numbers together, divide by the common factor, you're going to get your LCD. That's one way to do it too, just so you know. Maybe no one's ever showed you that, but you can do that. Okay, so we are finding LCDs that works great for our numbers, but what happens when we get some variables? We go... Oh no! <laughs> no, it's not bad. Just kidding. By the way, when you're looking for your LCD, are you considering the numerators? No. Does the numerators make a difference for the LCD? No. You don't even care. Just look at the denominators to find the LCD. So in our LCD, what we're going to do with this, we're going to look for the numbers first. We're going to find the LCD of the numbers. We're going to write that down. So let's look at 6 and 8. Give yourself about 10 seconds here. Don't say it out loud. Think, 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 think. 6 and 8, 6 and 8, 6 and 8. LCD is what? How much? 24. 24. Very good. Did you find 24 as well? Okay, so we're going to write down 24. So finding the LCD of numbers doesn't change. That sticks exactly the same. The variables are what I need you to, to worry about, okay? You have to get this part right. Here's how you find the LCD of any variables or any factors. What you do is you look for each type of factor, considering both denominators here, each type of factor, and you take the largest power that you can find of that particular factor. So for instance, notice how this is x times x times x. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. That means we have a factor of x. There's actually x times x times x. So x to the third power, we have that factor to the third power. Here we have x to the fifth power, right? They're not different variables. They, they're both x's. What you're going to do is you go, oh, OK, I have x's here. I've got x's here. Which one has the largest power that you can find of x? x to the fifth. That is your LCD right there in that case. It's not x to the eighth. You don't need to have both. Okay? You just need to have enough to cover both denominators. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, have enough to cover both. Five does it. Eight's too much. Five does it. x to the fifth would do it. You with me on this? Okay, so we'll go to the 24, no problem. We're going to take the largest power of each factor. So if you have x's, take the largest power of x that you can find. If you have y's, also take the largest power of y you can find. Here we don't have two different variables, we just have x's. So we're going to go, what's the largest power of x that we see? x to the fifth, that goes in our LCD. 
And here's how you can check it. Look at your LCD. Does it have at least a 6? Does it have the 6 in there? 6 divides it? Sure. Does it have at least the 8? Uh -huh. Does it have at least x to the 3rd? Sure. How about x to the 5th? That's perfect. That's all you need. You just need to be able to cover both denominators. So are you with me on this? Okay, let's start making this a little bit better and a little bit better for us. Uh, let's, try, let's try a couple more. First one, first one. We have denominators of 3y and 15y to the third. The numerators here don't care, really. We're just looking for LCD. The first thing we're going to do is find the LCD of just the numbers. Look at that real quick. Tell me the LCD for my numbers. 15. Oh, that's awesome. 3 already goes into 15. So we keep it. Now, think carefully about this. I want you to find me the LCD considering now my variables. Don't say it out loud. Just think about it for about five seconds. Let everybody think LCD considering my variables. Remember, I only have two, I have only one unique type of factor. They're just y's. So I'm going to take what as my LCD there? The y to the third. Not to the fourth, right? Not to the first, definitely. We need it to cover both. So we're going to take, we look for the y's. We go, oh, I have y's here and here. I'm going to take the largest power. That's, that's that one. Really, LCD is kind of easier than looking at, at other ones. Uh, I mean, you don't really have to do a whole lot of math. You're just looking for different factors. Just write them down. That's pretty much it. Uh, so here we'd say, does it cover the 3? Yeah. 15? Yeah. And does it have at least a y? Yes, it does. Does it have at least a y to the 3rd? Yeah. That's, and that's what we're looking for. How many people understand this idea? Good. Go ahead and do the last one for me. I'm going to erase this and write a couple other problems on the board. So we're looking for the largest power of each factor. For our numbers, what you get? 12. Great. There's not even another constant over here. For our variables, what would you get? X. Okay. So in this case, our LCD is, is this denominator. Does that ever happen? Sure, it happened here, right? With 15 was our LCD for the numbers. It could happen if you just had numbers. So this covers everything for us. It has the 12. It has the x to the 7th. It also has more than x to the 4th. So that covers everything for us. You don't need it twice. You just need enough to cover it. Now, what happens when we start doing things like, instead of just single terms like we've had, we start doing some rational expressions. First thing you're going to do, now the, all these steps might not be applicable to your particular problem, but here's the first step you're going to do. You see, when we're looking for LCD, what we're looking for are the largest powers of, I've been using this word a lot today, each common factor, right? Factor. Each common factor. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to factor the denominators. You've got to look for factors, right? It's got to be factored. Do I need to factor the numerators? That's a, no, not really. Because when you think of addition, subtraction, remember what we just did on the board? You have to combine like terms anyway, right? That means you'd have to distribute all your factor, and you'd have to undo it just to combine them. So unlike, I hope you're listening right now, unlike multiplication and division, where you factor everything and then just cross it out. With addition and subtraction, we just initially factor the denominators. Then we're going to combine everything, and that's when we factor the numerators at the very end. Okay? So you don't factor the numerators till the end of your problem here. 
nudge ahead if you're with me on that. Okay, so that's, that's kind of nice. We don't have to factor those. We just factor denominators. So first step, you're going to factor the denominators completely. Let's try that here. Look at my denominators on this problem. Do I need to factor those things? Mm, yes. I don't know. Can you factor 8 plus 5? No. Can Would you factor 8 minus 5? The negative 1 out of the A minus 5? The A is already positive. Oh. Okay, so yeah. that would be a good idea, but it's already positive. So no, that's, that's good, but we don't have to do that here. Do I need to factor those in any way? No. Okay, so in this step, we don't have to do that. No problem. Second step is you're going to look for common factors, not terms, factors. Look for factors. Not terms. Look for factors here. Tell me something. Is A a factor or is A a term? Term. That's a term. Our factors here are A plus 5 and A minus 5. Those are our factors. <laughs> Terms are the things separated by just subtraction. Factors are like the whole deal. Are you with me on this? So our factors are A plus 5 and A minus 5. What we do to find the LCD is after this, after you've factored, after you've identified your different terms, the LCD is very, very easy. All the LCD does is has you list the largest power of each factor. List the largest power of each factor. I will make it a little bit more specific. List the largest power of each different factor. Another word for that is a unique factor. Each different or unique factor. Okay, let's try it. Do I have any factors that are the same? Up there. A plus 5, A minus 5. Any factors that are the same? Yeah, you, know, you shake your heads. No, no, I have terms that are the same. That doesn't count. Don't care about terms. I have factors. So what I'm going to do is look for the different factors. I'm just going to list them. Tell me one factor I have up here. A plus 5. Okay, that's got to be there. I have to have that factor. A plus 5 only to the first power is right there. What's the other factor here? I have to have that one also. That's also to the first power. So I've listed my factors. Does it have A plus 5? Does it have A minus 5? You know? That's, that's your LCD. It has to have every factor. And that's it. So once the, really the hard part is factoring. Once you have your factors down, you look for the distinct factors, the unique ones, the different ones. Take the largest power that you can find of each one, and you're done. See if you can think on that for a second. I'll give you a few seconds. These go pretty quick. I mean, it's not like we have to do a whole lot of math work on this stuff. They go pretty quick. So let's just think on that one. See if you can find the LCD. Okay, LCD, we're looking for different factors. What's, tell me one factor in my denominators here that I need. A plus 2. I need an A plus 2. I heard that one first. Okay, definitely. Now, my question is, does this A plus 2 already include this A as a factor? Yes. See some people going yeah, I see some people going no. As a factor. No. Does it include it as a term? Yes. Is that good enough? No. No. 
If I divided this by A, would the A go away? Yes. Really? No. You mean I can do this? No. Oh, no. Then it's not divisible by A, therefore A is not a factor of it. Do you see the difference? That's important. So I'll give you the A plus 2. My question is, is this A the same as this A? No. So I also need an A. Okay. Do you see the difference there? It's kind of an important one. So I also need the A. So we ask ourselves, and, and here, here's where you would, if you made a mistake, here's where you'd catch it. You go, oh, okay, does it have at least a factor of A plus 2? Which means, does A plus 2 divide this? Mm -hmm. yeah. That works. Does A, is, do we have at least an A? Or in other words, does A divide this? Mm -hmm. Answer is <coughs> no, I just showed you that, right? You can't cross it out. That means it doesn't divide it. That means I'm missing that factor. Are you with me on that? It's an important one. A lot of people get caught up in that and go, oh, yeah, I've got to get A. That doesn't make sense. We also need A. Don't distribute this. Don't distribute that. Just leave it. You're done. That's your LCD, okay? So we, we don't ever distribute denominators, ever, because you're going to try to simplify them later, right? Why would you distribute it? Because you're just going to have to factor it later. You don't do that with denominators. Keep them exactly the same as they are. Raise your hand if that one made sense to you. Feel all right about that. Good. I really need you to see the difference between this A and that A. That's a big one. Now, the next thing we've got to do, this one. We're looking for our LCD. Let's go ahead. Let's try this. LCD, tell me one factor that you see up there. Tell me one factor. X minus 4. Okay, great. Now we're going to take the largest power that occurs of X minus 4. What's the largest power that occurs of X minus 4? So X minus 4, I can't just write that because look, I'm missing that 2. Do you see what I'm talking about? So I need the 2. I need the square. Are there any different factors? Tell me one. Okay, so do I need the 3? Mm -hmm. Of course I do. I can write the 3 out front. Okay, remember these are multiplied together. I'm taking different factors here. 3 is just a factor. I can write it wherever I want to. I'm going to write out front. And then anything else did you say? Okay, that's different. Good. Here's how you check. Okay, you look at your LCD, you look at your denominators. Does my LCD contain an x minus 4 squared? Does my LCD contain a 3? Does it contain x minus 12? Then that's my correct LCD. You go through your, both denominators, you see if you have all the appropriate uh, factors up there, and that's your LCD. How many people feel okay about this so far? Good, all right. What matters with the 3 right there next to the x? It's not going to be appropriately written, really, but okay. if you put it right here, right? Yeah. We like to have our constants out front. It's, it doesn't make it wrong. It just makes it so you see the three. Yeah, Okay, let's do this. Um, what's the first thing we need to do? Uh, up here, we, we couldn't do this. These were both already done. What's the first thing we, we would do here? Factor. Factor. Factor what? Numerators or denominators when we're adding or subtracting? Just denominators when you're adding or subtracting. Here, can I factor 2x minus 1? Okay, that's done. Can I factor 6x minus 3? Absolutely. Do that now. Write it below. What factors out of that? 3, 3 2x minus 1. Perfect. And now we get to look for our LCD. You see, without factoring it, look, look important. Without factoring it, you would not see common factors here. You see what I'm saying? You'd have, oh, yeah, I'd have x, 6x minus 3. While that would be a common denominator, it wouldn't be the lowest. And you know what? When we actually go about adding and subtracting these, you definitely want the lowest. Because you're going to have to multiply by whatever factors you don't have. And if you have more than like one or two, it just gets crazy big. I mean, it's just ridiculous. We don't want to have to spend all day distributing and combining like terms, do we? 
No. We're going to look for the lowest one. That makes it a lot easier. Trust me, we've been doing this. Trust me. Take my word for it. <laughs> okay, we're going to look for, for the largest power of each different factor. So, the first thing that I'm seeing up here, I see the constants first. That's how I, I'm geared. So, I see, okay, you know what? I need a 3. Do you see a 3? Yes, yes. The next thing I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for factors. The next, uh, well, besides that three, the next factor I see is 2x minus 1. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. However, watch carefully on the board. This is where people make a little mistake. Actually, it's kind of a big mistake. It's where people make a mistake. I see 2x minus 1 here, and I see 2x minus 1 here, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree those are the same factor? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You don't have to write them both. Okay, what you do, just like we did before with our very just like we did before with the variables. Did I write both the y and the y cubed? No. Did I write both the x and seven, x to the fourth? No. I wrote just the largest power of each different factor. Are you all right with that? Mm -hmm. We have the three, great. What am I going to write next? 2x minus 1 squared. Squared or cubed? Squared. I didn't hear you guys. Squared. 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 I felt like a drill sergeant there. I can't hear you. <laughs> Okay, 2x minus 1, that's the factor. We're just writing the largest power of each factor that happens, squared. I don't need both because I have enough to cover it. Here's how you check. Does it have the 2x minus 1 squared? Does it have the 3? Does it have at least a 2x minus 1? It covers it. You're fine. That's it. That's the lowest common denominator. Okay, we're going to do one more, and then we'll call it a day. know what to do, don't you? Factor. Yeah. How are you going to factor? Time time. Extra step. No. no. Definitely not. No, no. These are easy factors. Mm -hmm. Remember, you have to factor the denominators first before you can even talk about an LCD. You have to have factors. So we're going to factor this. We're going to factor this. We know this is 2 and negative 3, and this one's negative 3, and this one's 2. I'm guessing we're going to have 1s involved in this somehow. This one's, I'm guessing, 3 and negative 1. This one is going to be... Negative 1, negative 2. Good. No, I'm glad you saw that. Negative 1, negative 2. We don't have the extra step. So we just write y plus 5. We write y plus 4. And we're going to have our factors just like this. y plus 3, y minus 1, y minus 1, y minus 2. Our LCD all you have to do is list out the different, the largest power of each different factor that you see. So let's do this quickly in the last uh, 40 seconds or so that we have in class. What's the first different factor you see? Y plus 5, y plus 4, does that have to be there? No. So numerators, don't care. It's not in the lowest common denominator. Um, what else? Y minus 2. I heard y minus 1. Y minus 1. Now, do I have to have the y minus 1 squared? No. No, that doesn't happen. These are two different fractions. So it happens here, and it happens here. Can this one count for both of them? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, it covers both. That's fine. And the last one. Let me make two points real quick. Firstly, does it cover y plus 3? Yes. Y minus 1? Yes. Y minus 1 again? Yes. Y minus 2? Yes. Before you put, okay, before you do that, it's really loud. Um, if these had been on the same fraction, they're different fractions, you see that, right? Yeah. If they'd been on the same fraction, you would have to combine it to y minus 1 squared before you did this process. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Okay, that's an important part. How many people understood today what we talked about? Good deal. Would you like uh, to get started on your homework? You can do everything except for the, the last little part, which is uh, equivalent rational expressions. Uh, this will also be posted on the website in a little while. Okay. 
It's a lot because there's good practice there. So get started on it. Start finding me the LCDs, things like that, adding and subtracting some ones that already have common denominators. Uh, this won't be due tomorrow, though. This is going to be due on Friday, all right? All right, guys, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so we'll get started on this problem. Well, again, we're looking for LCD because we're going to use that in the next section to actually go about and add these rational expressions. So the first thing we learned from last time about LCD was you got to factor stuff, right? Now, when I'm talking about factor, do I mean the numerator or denominator? For LCD, yeah, it's just denominator because we're looking for factors here. So we got to have a factor. So in this part, we're not really looking at the x minus 5 or the x plus 8. We're looking down here at our denominators, and we're going to try to factor those things. So x minus 5, we'll keep that, by, uh, keep that just the same as it is right there. The x squared plus 5x plus 4. We're going to do a diagonal problem on that. Does it have the extra step or not? No. No, it's a pretty easy one. I mean, we're just going to do 5 and 4. Those numbers are? Four, one, one. Yeah. And we'll just do x plus 4. x plus 1. And that's factor. That's great. We're going to go on to the next one. We leave our x plus a alone. We factor our x squared minus 16. Now you should be pretty good at the x squared minus 16 at this point. We should be able to see those like immediately now. What is that called again? Great, different squares. And x squared minus 16 factors as two factors again. It was what now? Good. Show hands how you will factor that correctly. Fantastic. All right. Next thing we do is we find our LCD. So we're just going to list that out. LCD is the largest power of each different factor considering all your denominators. So in this case, we just uh, have to look for our factors and, and list them out. This is really the easy part. The factoring is the hard part. So we're going to look at this. I see an x plus 4. You go right down the list. I see an x plus 1. Then I go over to my second fraction. I see an x plus 4. Do I need to write it again? No. Do I need to write it to the second power? No. No, it's really already taken care of. The only time you would need to do that is if these were in the same fraction, I mentioned that last time, then you'd have to combine it first before you did this process. Are you with me on that? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay, so you would have to put them together if they were in the same fraction. And then lastly, we have our x minus 4. We've just listed out every different factor that we've seen. We can go ahead and check. Does it have an x plus 4? Yeah. x plus 1? Yeah. Does it have an x plus 4 in there? Yeah, I already had that, and x minus 4. So as long as we're listing every different factor, we've got it down. You don't have to list them twice if they're in different fa uh, fractions. Now we've got, got that right. Good for you. All right. Now, there's one last thing I want to talk about, and it's this. If you were to find the LCD of this fraction right here, you might go ahead and do x minus 4 and 4 minus x, because clearly they're, they're different factors, right? They, they are. However, we can sometimes manipulate our denominators, factor something appropriately, uh, that, that helps us a little bit. Now here's what I'm talking about. Instead of considering this, so I'm going to cross that out, instead of doing that, what we could do is change one of these denominators. Specifically, if you follow those rules where I said you always make the largest power of x or your variable positive. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. if, if you do that, it, sometimes it helps you a lot. In this case, instead of having a very large LCD, look what we could do. We could leave the x minus 4 alone. But on the 4 minus x, if we factor out a negative 1, what that becomes is negative 4 plus x which actually is the same thing as that if we reverse them. So the negative 4 plus x, the same thing as x minus 4. Also, one other thing, I hope you're watching up here. That negative, I already touched this as well. It doesn't really matter where it goes. It can go here on the bottom, go up front, go up top. It doesn't matter. So what I could do is move that negative to the top, flip these around, and I have exactly the same thing. Then it already has a common denominator, and you don't need to waste your time doing this stuff. Does that make sense to you? So if you factor that negative out, sometimes it really, really helps. If you forget to do that, can you still do the problem this way? Yeah, you can. It's just not your lowest common denominator. All right? It's going to cause you a lot of extra time, a lot of extra work there. 
All right? So uh, oftentimes, if you manipulate and do what I told you to do, make the largest uh, power of x positive, factor up the negative, that's this. You can move the negative to the top, that's not a problem, that's here. Reverse these things around, that's legal to do. You just keep the signs with those terms, you get the same denominator. You don't even have to look for an LCD, it's already there for you. All right. Now, the last part of our section, if, how many people started their homework? Did you? Okay. You probably got to the last part and like, well, yeah. <laughs> that has to do with equivalent rational expressions. Now, they're not hard things, you just kind of have to be shown how to do it once or twice, and then you're like, oh yeah, that's not a problem. Here's how you do that. I'll start with something, something very simple. Most of the problems are going to look something like that. You have a complete fraction on the left, equal sign, and then a missing part on a fraction on the right. Here's what equivalent rational expressions are trying to get you to do. All right? They're trying to get you to have underlying concepts to do the next section, which is to add and subtract, which means what do I need to multiply by in order to get an LCD. So basically what we're doing is we're saying here's one fraction with a denominator of 5, here's a fraction with a denominator of 15. What I'm trying to do is make these equivalent fractions, basically this is the LCD that you would find, how do I make this one into this one? So the question is, here's how you answer all those, those questions on your homework. What did you do, by multiplication, to get from this denominator to this denominator? How, what did you have to multiply by? Okay, so from here to here, you're saying, I multiplied by 3. Everyone agree with that? Okay. The only thing you have to do now is say, oh, okay, since I multiplied the denominator by 3 to get from here to here, what I have to do to the top is now multiply this by 3. So how much is the 3 times 3? And that's what goes here. Okay, you completed that fraction now. And you'll see that 9 thirteenths is equivalent to 3 fifths. So how you answer this question is you find out how they got from here to here. So you, you, you do that in your head or on, on paper. You find out how they get from here to here. Then you just do the same thing to the numerator. And that completes your problem. Does, do you understand that? Okay, that's, that's really what they're trying to get you to do. Now, of course, we're not just going to deal with numbers. We can deal with stuff like that. It's not any harder. You just have to figure out what they're multiplying by. <coughs> so down here, we're going to write how in the world they're getting from 5y to 20x squared y squared. So we have to multiply. Answer the number first, the 5 to the 20. What do you multiply by to get from here to here as far as the number goes? You all see the 4? 5 times 4 gives you 20. Okay. Also, what else is over here that you didn't have over here? What do you need to multiply by? X squared. Great. X squared has to be in there somewhere. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, anything else? Y. Y. Why? Good. Yeah. Y. Awesome. So 5Y, we got 4 x squared y, we'll double check that, okay? 5 times 4 gives you 20. 5y times x, oh, that's where x squared is coming from. y times y gives you y squared. You all right with that? So you ask that question, how do you get from here to here? And then what you're going to do, take this piece of information you just found, and just multiply the numerator by that. And that will give you your new equivalent numerator. So we're going to multiply by 4 x squared y, exactly what you just had to solve. Let's do the math. Uh, if you multiply 2x times 4x squared y, what are we going to get? 8x Perfect. You can always check your work. If you simplify this one, you must get this one back. And, and you will. I mean, if we simplify that, you're going to get the 2 over the 5. The x's, notice you have 1x on the top. The y's will have one y on the bottom, so it does simplify back down if you wanted to check your work, but that's how you do it. Uh, what we're doing here is purposely unsimplifying fractions. That's what we're doing, purposely unsimplifying them. And the reason is you have to find common denominators, and you're going to see that in the next section. Well, let's try a few more, really get the hang of this, and then we'll move on.
I'll show you how to use this idea in the next section. What in the world? Oh my gosh. Now this might not be so apparent to you, like how you get from the first denominator to the second one by multiplication. It might not. You're like, wait a second. It's got two terms. That has, that has two terms. How do they get from here to here? However, what's one thing we did in the past that really helps us see what we need to multiply by? In the last, the last examples that we did, what did we do first? Pretty much in every single case we've done in this class. Hmm? No, what did we do first? Before we even... Distribute. Not distribute, the opposite of that. All good ideas. We are, but in order to get the parentheses around the factors, you actually need to factor it. Right? You gotta factor it. So, what we need to do first in order to see what we're actually multiplying by, because you can't just do this. You can't, most times. You can't just go, okay, how do I get from the 3y to the 15y? Because there might be other things going on there you need to see. In this case, that is actually going to work, uh, but we want a factor to really see that. So the first thing you're going to do, just like you did over here, just like you did in every other problem we've done before in this class, you're going to factor the denominators. Okay? That, that's the minimum that you do in, this, in, in here is you factor denominators every time. So we're going to factor the denominators. Does this one factor? Does this one factor? Yes. What? Perfect. So instead of the 15y plus 10, we'll factor 5 out, and we'll get what? If you factor, it becomes a whole lot easier to see what you're multiplying by. Do you see that? I mean, really, you can see how do you get from 3y plus 2 to 5 times 3y plus 2. And it's really a trivial question at that point, right? Because you're like, oh, how do we get from 3y plus 2 to 5 times 3y plus 2? You know, oh, I must have times to by 5. That's exactly what you did. Do you, do you guys see what I'm talking about there? Oh, yeah, all right, so... Let's multiply by 5, and that's going to give us 5 times 3 by plus 2. If we do the same thing to the numerator, we have to do the same thing to the top as you do to the bottom. That's how these fractions work, because you're really multiplying by a fancy 1. What are you going to get up there? Yeah, that's it. How do people feel okay with this so far? Okay. Let's look at one more. Do you guys need examples to do on your own or do you feel okay enough on, on this? Okay. Feel okay? You sure? Okay, so with with our simple, well not simple, but with our single terms and single terms, we're basically just looking at what do you need to multiply by. When you have, almost a disaster, when you have more than one term, factor first, factor, wouldn't that be funny? That would not be funny at first, but like a year later, maybe like 10 years later, <laughs> on my deathbed, it'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Okay. So if you have more than one term, you're going to factor. It makes things a whole lot easier to see, and then we just write what we need to multiply by. Are you with me on that? Let's try one more together. Maybe I'll give you one on your own after that, and we'll be, we'll be good to go. Okay, at first glance, this one looks kind of involved, right? But I'm going to kind of suggest to you that this sometimes is easier to do than this one, as long as you know how to factor. Because you're, you're going to see right away what you're, you're missing. So let's take a look at this. x squared minus 25, you should not affect that, right? Mm -hmm. You see that all the time now. That's going to be what? Great, yeah, that difference of squares. So we'll factor that first, that's what it says. Now these are already factored, that's, that's awesome. Um, and, and here we really can't factor uh, x cubed type terms, so I'm sorry, type polynomials very easily unless they all have an x in common, which these wouldn't. So it'll probably be given to you factored already. That's great. Over here we'll do x minus 5, x plus 5. And the question is, how do you get from these two 
to these three. Now, as soon as you've already had them factored, it's pretty easy to see. It just says, what are you missing? I mean, what don't you have here that you do have over here? What, what don't you have? X minus three. So that's, that's what you multiplied by. Mm -hmm. well, that's not bad. Once it's factored, it's essentially given to you. I mean, that's what was up here too, right? It just it gave it to you. It said, oh, I don't have a five over here. I do have a five over here. That must have been what I multiplied by. Not your head if you're okay on that. Okay. So whatever you do to the denominator, we're now going to do that to the numerator. And we'll have 3 times x minus 3. You can leave it like that, or you can choose to distribute. Uh, when we get to our actual adding and subtracting in the next section, we will be distributing because you're going to have to combine like terms. Okay, that's the, really the only time we distribute after we factor it is because we need to combine like terms. Okay, give one of these a try. Ah, what the heck, we'll do two. We'll do two. We've got extra examples up here. So the first one, because we're dealing with single terms up there, single, uh, not, not a whole bunch of terms stuck together with this subtraction, we don't have to factor first. There's nothing to factor on the first one. However, on the second one, you are going to have to factor that first. So let's do that, figure out what your equivalent expression is going to be. Once you get the hang of this, it goes pretty quick if you know how to factor easily. Some people have done already, that's great. If we would hopefully work on the second one, factory those things. So on the first, our top example here, we need to determine how to get from 5y to 35xy squared. All, all of a sudden I see the 5 to the 35, that means I'm multiplying by 7. That's got to be in there. So our 7's first. Take care of those numbers. Also, I notice I have an x here that I didn't have here. That means I must have multiplied by an x. And finally, I see a y squared when I only had a y to begin with. That means I must have multiplied by y. How many will found 7xy? Oh, good thing. <coughs> okay, we multiply the top by the same thing. That's our numerator, 7xy. Uh, the numbers give us 21. The x's give us x squared, the y gives us a single y. Did you make it that far? Good for you. We just multiply our 3x times our 7xy, exactly what we found down here, and we get the, what the problem is going to be asking for in your homework. Okay, last one. Of course we do have to factor. Factoring in this case means this, this is taken care of. This one over here is what we're worried about. You'll set your diamond problem up. No extra step. It's kind of a nice one. I'm thinking 3 and 5 somehow? Yeah. Negative 5. And plus 3. We're going to determine what's here that we're missing over here. That's what we multiplied by. And what's the only factor that we didn't have? X minus 2. So that's what we're multiplying by, x minus 2. We just have to do that to the top, to our numerator. And we're going to get 3 times x minus 2. Distribute it if you'd like, get the 3x minus 6, or leave it like that, that's fine. Would you raise your hand feel okay with this equivalent rational expression stuff? Now are you going to be able to do your homework, do you think? Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, it's not, not too bad. As long as you follow these steps, it'll be all right for you. Now, the next thing we do, 7.4, is how we use this in conjunction with finding LCD to actually go about and adding and subtracting rational expressions. So let's take a look at that. 